Today we are starting part five on our reading of the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. If this is the first time you're stumbling upon this video, I suggest that you go back and watch part one through four or listen to part one through four before carrying on with this section of the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. And as always, I highly suggest that you go over and watch our episodes on the Dark Outpost on Tuesday night. If you have not watched those episodes, there is a link down in the description box below. This reading on this Wednesday is a Cliff Notes version of what we talked about on the Dark Outpost between David Zublik and myself when we broke down this section of the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. So if you are somebody that enjoys commentary and wants to hear more commentary than what I will be providing in this reading, then please go over to thedarkoutpost.com. The Gospel of the Holy Twelve, Section 8, Lections 71 through 80. Lection 71, The Cleansing of the Temple. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up again from Bethany into Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and chargers of money sitting. And he made a scourge of seven cords, and he drove them out of the temple, and loosened the sheep and the oxen and the doves, and poured out the chargers' money and overthrew the tables. So a scourge of seven cords is a whip. So he was whipping at the humans to get out of the temple and then he went and freed all of the animals that were there. Verse three says, and he said unto them, take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Is it not written, my house is a house of prayer for all nations, but ye have made it a den of thieves and filled it with all manners of abominations. And again, if you have been following along with this gospel, you know that Throughout this gospel, Jesus commands us to take care of the animals. He tells us that we should not be eating meat. He also refers to the animals as our brothers and sisters. As I've said many times, something that was very powerful in this gospel to read was reminding us that the animals breathe the same air that we breathe, that God created the animals with such detail and finery in the manner in which he also created humans. Verse 4 says, And he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel of blood through the temple, or that any animals should be slain. And the disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for thine health hath eaten me up. So once again, we see here that Jesus was not just upset about the merchants, but he was also upset that animals and innocent blood was being sacrificed and shed in his temple, the temple of God. We know the story of Jesus being upset about the merchants in the temple, but the early um, Christian church, as in Constantine's Council of Nicaea, removed this part of the story. And my question is why? Why did Constantine, the emperor Constantine, find it necessary to remove the information about animal sacrifice? Something interesting to ponder. Verse 5 says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Again I say unto you, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and sixty years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But Jesus spake of the temple of his body. So yes, he's talking about his pending crucifixion where he would be gone for three days and then he would rise himself up from the dead. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them and believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. What's it our favorite military back channel says? Sometimes you have to show the people, you can't just tell them. And that is definitely very parent here in this gospel. In this gospel, we have seen countless miracles, way more miracles accounted in this gospel than in our canonized Bible. And it's also saying that when Jesus rises again from the dead, that will be showing them, not just telling them. Seeing is believing, right? Verse 8 says, But the scribes and the priests saw and heard and were astonished, 
and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, seeing that all the people were attentive to his doctrine. So again, throughout this gospel, we have seen that power struggle between the rabbis and the scribes and the Pharisees and Jesus. And when even one was come, he went out of the city, for by day he taught in the temple, and at night he went out and abode on the Mount of Olives. And people came early in the morning to hear him in the temple courts. Verse 10 says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at Passover, many believed in his name, and when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. He needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew that what was in man. And Jesus, seeing the Passover night was at hand, sent two of his disciples, that they should prepare the upper room where he desired to eat with his twelve, and buy such things as were needed for the feast which he purposed thereafter. Lection 72, the many mansions in the one house. And Jesus sat with his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane, and he said unto them, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my parents' house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may also be. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And he can we know the way. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh upon the all-parent but by me. If ye had known me, ye would have known my parent also. And from henceforth ye know and have seen my parent. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the all-parent, and it suffereth us. Jesus said unto him, If have I been so long time with you, and ye hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the all-parent. And how sayest thou, show us the all-parent? Believest thou not that I am the all-parent, and the all-parent is in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the all-parent who dwelleth in me and doeth the work. So if you guys remember from last week, we see that the uh, rabbis and the Pharisees and the scribes got really upset because they accused Jesus of saying that he was equal to God. And Jesus corrected them and said, I never said I was equal to God. I'm telling you, I am one with God. And we see him repeating that here when he is talking to Philip, saying that the Father God, the all parent source, is within me. God is within me. And in Eastern philosophy, especially in like yoga, that's a sense of what we call samadhi where you become eventually become one with the creator, one with God. That's the goal of our soul's existence, which we know our soul never dies, is to become one back with our own parent, which is God. Verse four goes on to say, believe me that I am in the all parent and the all parent in me, or else believe me of every work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they who believe on me, the works that I do shall they also do and greater works than these shall they do, because I go unto my parents. There's a similar verse to that in the book of John, I believe, where they taught, he says, you will go on to do greater works than me. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the all parent may be glorified in the son and daughter of man. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the all-parent who shall give you another comforter to abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth not, neither knoweth, but ye know, for the spirit dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. They who have my commandments and keep them, these are they who love me. They that love me shall be loved by my parent, and I will love them and will manifest myself to them. Judith saith unto him, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If any love me, they will keep my word, and the Holy One will love them, and we will come unto them and make our abode with them. They that love me not keeping not my sayings, and the world which ye hear is not mine, but the all parents who sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. 
But the Comforter, who is my mother, holy wisdom, whom the Father will send in my name, she shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard now, I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the all-parent, for the all-parent is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the all-parent, and the all-parent gave me commandment. Even so I do, even unto the end. Lection 73, The True Vine, verse 1. After these things Jesus spake, saying unto them, I am the true vine, and my parent is the vine dresser. Every branch in me beareth not fruit is taken away, and every branch that beareth fruit is purged, that it may bring forth more fruit. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it able in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the tree, and you are the branches. Whoso abide in me, and I in them, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me ye do nothing. If any abide not in me, they are cast forth as useless branches." And they wither away, and men gather them, and then cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it will be done unto you. So basically, if you have a true heart, you are going to be shown the, the answers to your questions. That's what I get from that. It's like in the Bible, it says, knock and the door shall be open unto you, ask and you shall receive. So it's if you're true in heart, it's not like you're going to pray for God to do bad things or hurt someone else, it's not going to happen. But if you are true in heart and you seek the mysteries of God, then they will be revealed unto you. Verse 4, Verily I am the true bread which cometh down out of heaven, even the substance of God, which is one with the life of God. And as many grains are in one bread, so are ye who believe and do the will of my parent, not one in me. Not as your ancestors did eat mammon and are dead, but they who eat this bread shall live forever. As the wheat is separated from the chaff, so much ye be separated from the falsities of the world. Ye must not go out of the world, but live separately in the world for the life of the world. Now we can see verse 5 in two different ways. We spoke earlier on the Dark Outpost about the Essenes. And for those who are not familiar with the Essenes, I do have some videos on the Essenes and the Dead Sea Scrolls. They were a group of Jewish people who lived at the same time with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they lived in an area called Qumran. And Qumran is where we found our Dead Sea Scrolls in the 1940s. The Essenes were the people who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls. It is believed that Jesus himself was an Essene, along with John the Baptist and some of Jesus' other biological family members. The Essenes separated themselves from the world. They kind of lived in what we would consider maybe a commune, um, even though I don't think they were perhaps as toxic as some communes have proven to be in our modern times. And the Essenes very much separated themselves from everybody else. They kind of had their own little community where they were totally focused on writing down prophecies, writing down scribes. They really were seeking the coming of the Messiah. After the Messiah came, they were seeking and excited about the second coming of the Messiah. We have talked about the War Scroll, which is an incredible scroll from the Dead Sea Scrolls that should have been placed before the Book of Revelation. And if you read the War Scroll and you study the War Scroll, the Book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, reads very, very differently. 
It is also talking about the fact in our modern times, which Jesus would have known this, the disciples would not have, but Jesus would have known that we were going to have to live within our world. We have to live within the world, the materialistic world, the dominion of Lucifer, if you will, and exist here. But our souls are separate. We have to know that we are separate from the world in which we live in. And I think that's very easy to see nowadays in what is going on in the world. So we're going to go on with verse 6. Verily, verily, the wheat is parched by fire, so must ye my disciplines pass through tribulations. But rejoice ye, for having suffered with me as one body, ye shall reign with me in one body and give life to the world. Herein is my parent glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the all parent hath loveth me, so have I loveth you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my parents' commandments and abided in the spirit of love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So that, again, we recognize that from the Bible. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you my friends, for all things that I have heard of my parent I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, and ye shall remain, that whoever ye shall seek, ask of the all-parent in my name, ye shall receive. It's kind of like when they say, God doesn't pick the prepared, he prepares the picked. That's kind of what Jesus is saying, like, I picked you, you didn't pick me, and I prepared you. These things I command you, that ye love one another and all the creatures of God. If the Lord hates you, ye know that it is hatred of me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you its own. But because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Verse 11 says, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my parent also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have, and have seen and hated both me and my parent. But this cometh to pass, and the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the all-parent, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father and the mother, the same shall testify of me, and ye shall also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Lection 74, Jesus foretelleth persecutions. Verse 1, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye shall be forewarned. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Ye the time cometh, that whoever killeth you will think that they do God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the all-parent nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to my parent that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither thou go? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will spend my spirit unto you. And when the spirit is come, the word shall be reproved of sin and righteousness and judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 
Howbeit, when the spirit of truth is come, she will guide you into all truth. And the same will show you things to come and shall glorify me. For the same shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that my parent hath are mine. Therefore said I that the comforter shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me again. In a little while ye shall see me because I go to the all parent. Then said one of his disciples among themselves, What is it he hath said unto you? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the all parent. Verse 7 says, Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves for that I said, A little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep, and lament, the word shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Verse 8 says, A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more of the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. In the day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask my parent in my name, ye will receive. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things that I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in the mystery, but I shall show you plainly of the old parent." At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I, sh and I say not unto you that I will pray my parent for you, for the all-parent in truth loveth you, because he hath loveth me, and hath believeth that I come out from God. I came forth from God, and I come into the world again. I leave the world, and I go unto my God. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no mystery. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needeth not that any man should ask thee. For this we believe that thou comest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, and ye shall be scattered every man to his own home, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, in the world you might have tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the word. Arise, let's go hence. Lection 75 is the last Paschal Supper, so this is referring to Passover. Verse 1, And at the evening the master cometh into the house, and there are gathered with him the twelve and their fellows, Peter and Jacob, and Thomas and John, and Simon and Matthew, and Andrew and Nathaniel, and James and Thaddeus, and Jude and Philip, and their companions. And there was also Judas Iscariot, who by men was numbered with the twelve till the time when he should be manifested. So going back, it talks about all the disciples having their companions, which are their wives, which we have spoken about in other episodes on the dark outpost, especially with the Acts of Philip. We don't really see their wives that much mentioned in the canonized Bible, but the wives of the disciples are spoken about a lot in the missing gospels. Very interesting, right? I wonder why the Council of Nicaea, the 300s and the 4th century, why they uh, were so um, eager to get rid of the uh, characters of the wives of the disciples. Verse 2, And they were all clad in garments of white linen, pure and clear, for linen is the righteousness of the saints, and he each had the color of his tribe. But the master was clad in his pure white robes overall, without seam or spot. And there arose contention among them as to which of them should be esteemed the greatest. Wherefore he said unto him, He that is my greatest among you, let him as he doth serve. And Jesus said, With desire have I desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, and to institute the memorial of my oblation for the services and salvation of all. For behold, the hour cometh when the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners. And one of the twelve said unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered, He to whom I give the sop, the same as he. 
And Iscariot said unto him, Master, behold the unleavened bread and the mingled wine and the oil and the herbs. But where is the lamb that Moses commanded? For Judas had bought the lamb, but Jesus had forbade that it should be killed. And John spake in the spirit, saying, Behold the Lamb of God, the good shepherd, which giveth his life for the sheep. And Judith was troubled at these words, for he knew that he should betray him. But again Judas said, Master, is it not written in the law that the land must be slain for Passover within the gates? And Jesus answered, If I am lifted up on the cross, then indeed shall the lamb be slain. But woe unto him by whom it is delivered into the hands of the slayers. It was better for him that he not been born. So that's interesting. You know, um, the laws of Moses said that at Passover, a lamb shall be slain or killed to be eaten. And I know at Easter, we lamb is a, a, a meat that is eaten a lot at Easter. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 do not eat an actual lamb that's figurative because I am the lamb. I am the lamb that will be sacrificed. Um, very interesting. Verse 9 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, for this end I have come into the world, that I may put away all blood offerings and the eating of flesh of the beasts and the birds that are slain by men. So he's saying, do not eat meat anymore. Done. No more eating of the animals. And we have seen this repetitively throughout the whole gospel. He has been very strict about that, that if you are to follow Christ, if you were to follow God, then you should refrain from eating meat because the animals are also loved by God and are given life by God. Verse number 10 says, In the beginning God gave to all the fruits of the trees and the seeds and the herbs for food. But those who loved themselves more than God to their fellows corrupted their ways and brought diseases into their bodies and filled the earth with lust and violence. So again, God gave us fruit and herbs to eat, but we are filled with lust and violence and that's why we eat meat. Not by shedding innocent blood, therefore, but by living a righteous life shall ye find the peace of God. Ye shall call me the Christ of God and ye shall say, well, for I am the way, the truth, and the light. Walk ye in the way, and ye, ye shall find God. Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Live in the life, and ye shall see no death. All things are alive in God, and the Spirit of God filleth all things. Keep ye the commandments. Love thy God with all thy heart, and love thy neighbor as thyself. On these hang all the law and the prophets. And the sum of this law is this, do not eat unto others as ye would not that others do unto you. Do ye unto others as ye would that others should do unto you. Verse 14 said, Blessed are they who keep this law, for God is manifested in all creatures. All creatures live in God, and God is hid in them. After these things, Jesus dipped the sop and gave it to Judas Iscariot, saying, What thou doest, do it quickly. And then having received the sop, went out and immediately, and it was light. And when Judas Iscariot had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified among his twelve, and God is glorified in him. And verily I say unto you, They who receive you receive me, and they who receive me receive the Father and Mother who sent me. And ye who have been faithful unto the truth shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And one said unto him, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom unto Israel? And Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world, neither are all Israel, which are called Israel. They are in every nation, who defile not themselves with cruelty, who do righteousness, love mercy, and reverence all the works of God, who give secular to the weak and oppressed. The same are the Israel of God. So again, we've seen that many times throughout this gospel, that Israel, when God refers to Israel or Jesus refers to Israel, he's not talking about the actual land, the actual country. He's talking about his people make up Israel. And his people aren't just going to be Jewish people as we now know. As he has said, they're also going to be Gentiles. And Gentiles are anybody who's not Jewish. I'm a Gentile. I'm a white girl, so I'm a Gentile. And we know that the Christian faith has spread heavily throughout the Gentile world. Lection 76, the washing of the feet, new commandment, the Eucharist oblation. 
When the Passover supper ended, the lights were kindled, for it was even, and Jesus arose from the table and laid aside his garment and girded himself with a towel, pouring water into the basin, washed the feet of each of his four twelve, and wiped them with a towel in which he was girded. And one of them said, Lord, thou shalt not wash my feet. And Jesus said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And he answered, Lord, wash not my feet only, but my head and my hands. And he said unto them, They who have come out of the bath need not but to wash their feet. They are very clean in wit. Verse 4 says, And then putting on the overgarment of pure white linen without spot or seam, he sat at the table and said unto them, Know ye what I have done unto you? Ye call me Lord and Master. And if then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye ought to also wash one another's feet. For I have given this example that I have done unto you, so also should ye do unto others. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another and all creatures of God. Love is fulfilling of the law, love is of God, and God is love. Whoso loveth not, knoweth not God. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. By this shall all men know that they are my disciples. And if ye have loved one to another and shown mercy and love to all creatures of God, especially to those that are weak and oppressed and suffering wrong. For the whole earth is filled with dark places of cruelty and with pain and sorrow by the selfishness and ignorance of man. I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and give them light for their darkness, and let the spirit of love dwell within your hearts and abound unto all. And again I say unto you, love one another and all creatures of God. And we had finished, they said, blessed be God. Then he lifted his voice, and they joined him, saying, As the heart panteth after the water, brooks so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And when they had ended, one brought unto him a censer full of live coals, and he cast frankincense thereon, even the frankincense which his mother had given in the day of his manifestation. The sweetness of the odor filled the room. So the frankincense that was brought to him at his birth from the three wise men, that his mother gave him later on in his life he's now using that's interesting it's like coming full cycle full, full cycle right verse 9 says then jesus placed before him the platter and behind it the chalice and lifting up his eyes to the heaven gave thanks for the goodness of god in all things and unto all and after that he took in his hands the unleavened bread and blessed it, the wine likewise mingled with water and blessed it, chanting the invocation of the holy name, the sevenfold, calling upon thrice the Holy Father, Mother in heaven to send down the Holy Spirit and make the bread be his body, even the body of Christ and the fruit of the vine of his blood, even the blood of Christ for the remission of sins and everlasting life to all who obey the gospel. So this is the first communion that we're watching or we're reading. In our mind's eye, we're watching it, but we're reading the words. Verse 10 said, Then lifting up the oblation towards the heaven, he said, The son who is also the daughter of man is lifted up from the earth, and I shall draw all men unto me. Then it shall be known of the people that I am sent from God. These things done, Jesus spake these words, lifting his eyes to the heavens. Abba, Amma, thy hour is come. Glorify thy son, and thy son may be glorified in thee. Ye thou hast glorified me, thou hast filled my heart with fire. Thou hast set lamps on my right hand and on my left hand, so that no part of my being should be without light. Thy love shineth on my right hand and on my left, so that no part of my being should be without light. Thy loveth shineth on my right hand, thy wisdom on my left hand. Thy love, thy wisdom, thy power are manifested in me. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work thou gavest me to do. Holy One, keep through thy name the twelve and their fellows, whom I, thou, hast given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Whilst I was in them in the world, I kept them in thy name, and none of them is lost. For he who went from us was not one of us. Nevertheless, I pray for him that he may be restored. Father, mother, forgive him, for he knoweth not what he doeth. So he's talking about Judas. And now come I to thee, that these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I give them thy word, and the world hath them, 
because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray that thou shalt take them out of the world, but that thou shalt keepest them from evil while ye yet they in the world. Sanctify them through thine truth. Thy word is truth. And thou sendest me into the world, so also I send them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified through truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for all that should be added to their number. And for the two and seventy also whom I sent forth, ye for all that shall believe in the truth through thy word, for they also may be one to thy holy art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in thee and that the world may know that thou hast seen me. Holy parent, I will also that thy whom thou givest me, ye all who live be with me where I am, that they may partake of the glory which thou givest me, for thou lovest me in all and all in men from before the foundation of the world. The world hath not known that thee and thy righteousness, but I know thee, and these know that thou hast sent me. For I have declared unto them thy name, that the love wherefore thou hast loved me may be in them, and that from them it may abound even unto thy creatures, ye even unto these worlds be, being ended. They all lifted up their voices with him and prayed, and he taught them, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art above and within, hallowed be thy sacred name in Trinity, in wisdom, love, and equity, thy kingdom come to all. Thy holy will be done always as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day to partake of thy holy bread and the fruits of thy living vine. As we seek to perfect others, so perfect us in thy Christ. Show upon us thy goodness to that others we may show the same. In the hour of trial, deliver us from evil. For thine are the kingdom, the power, and the glory from the ages of ages, now and to the ages of ages. Amen. Then our master hath taken the holy bread and breaketh it, and the fruit of the vine also, and mingled it, and blessed, having blessed it, and hollowed both, and casting a frag fragment of bed and bread excuse me, into the cup, he blessed the holy union. So again, communion. And then he giveth the bread, which he had hollowed to his disciples, saying, Eat ye, for this is my body, even the body of Christ, which is given for the salvation of the body and the soul. Likewise, he giveth unto them the fruit of the vine, which he had the blessed, saying unto them, Drink ye, for this is my blood, even the blood of Christ, which is shed for you and for many, for the salvation of the soul and the body. And when all had partaken, he said unto them, As oft as ye assemble together in my name, make this ob oblation for the memorial of me. Even the bread of everlasting life and the wine of eternal salvation, and eat and drink thereof, with a pure heart, and ye shall receive the substance and the life of God which dwelleth in me. When they had sung a hymn, Jesus stood up in the midst of the apostles, and going to him who was in the center in the solemn dance, they rejoiced in him. And then he went out of the mountain of olives, and his disciples followed. Now Judith Iscariot had gone to the house and said unto him, Behold, he has celebrated Passover within the gates with the Maza in the place of the lamb. I indeed brought a lamb, but he forbade it that it should be killed. And lo, man of whom I brought it is witness. Verse 28 says, And Caiaphas rent his clothes and said, Truly this Passover of the law of Moses, he hath done the deed which is worthy of death, for it is a weighty transgression of the law. What need of further witness? Ye, even now, two robbers have broken into the temple and stolen the books of the law, and this is the end of his teaching. Let us tell these things to the people who follow him, for they will fear the, the authority of the law. And one that was standing by Judas came out and said unto him, Thinkest thou that they will put him to death? And Judas said, Nay, for he will do some mighty work to deliver himself out of their hands. Even as when they were in the synagogues and rose up against him and brought him to the brow of the hill, that they might throw him down headlong, and he did not pass safely through their midst, he will surely escape them now also and proclaim himself openly instead of the kingdom whereof he spake. So even though Judas betrayed Jesus, it seems like he kind of assumed that Jesus would get himself out of this next little situation although we know that this next situation was the crucifixion. Lection 77, the agony in the garden, verse 1. 
And as they went to the Mount of Olives, Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Simon answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desireth to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith will not fail, and when thou art converted, strengthening thy brotherhood. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both unto prison and unto death. And Jesus said, I tell thee, Simon, the cock shall not crow this night, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. So that's Peter, Simon Peter, um, that will deny three times knowing, knowing God. Verse 4 says, Then cometh Jesus with them, having crossed the brook unto the garden called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Then saith unto him, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, mother, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And he cometh unto the disciples, finding them asleep, saith unto Peter, What keep ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time around and prayed, O my father, mother, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed a third time, saying, O my father, mother, not my will, but thine be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Then cometh he unto his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Lection 78, The Betrayal by Judas Iscariot. Verse 1, And it came to pass, while Jesus yet spake, behold, there came a multitude. And Judas, the one that was called Iscariot, went before them. For Judas, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priest and the Pharisees, came thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all these things that should come to pass, Upon him went forth and said unto them, Who seek ye? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And as soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. When they arose, they asked he again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you, I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Now he that betrayeth him gave them a sign, saying, Whomever I shall kiss, that is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Is it with a kiss that thou betrayest the Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and the captains of the temples and the elders, which were come to him, Why ye come out as again a thief? with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus. And Simon Peter stretched forth his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Oh, Peter cut off an ear. <laughs> wow. Then said Jesus unto him, Put away again thy sword into its place. All they take that the sword shall perish by the sword. And Jesus touched his ear and healed him. So even in the stressful situation, Jesus literally put the ear back on, <laughs> on the person. I don't think that's actually in the canonized Bible. Interesting. You'll have to let me know in the comments below. 
And he said unto Peter, Thinkest thou that I can now pray to my parent, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? And how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now the high priest was he who gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the sins of the people. And the scribes and the elders were assembled together, but Peter, John, and Simon, and Jude followed far off unto the high priest's palace, and they went in and sat with the servants to see the end. And they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and when they were set down together, Peter sat down among them and warmed himself, and Simon also sat by him. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with them, and he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Simon said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth, for his speech betrayed him. And Simon denied the third time with an oath, saying, I know that not that man. And immediately why he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Simon, and Simon remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crows, this day shalt deny me thrice. And Simon went out and wept bitterly. Lection 79, the Hebrew trial. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and his doctrine, saying, How are how old art thou? Art thou that said that our father Abraham saw thy day? And Jesus answered, Verily before Abraham was I am. And the high priest said, Thou art not yet fifty years old. How sayest thou that hast seen Abraham? Who art thou? Who makest thou thyself to be? What dost thou teach? And Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I even taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. And in secret I have said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, and I have said unto them, Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer thou the high priest so. Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, many false witnesses came, yet they agreed not together. At the last came the two false witnesses, and one of them said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the other said, This man said, I will destroy his temple and build up another. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses speak against thee? But Jesus held his peace. Now it was unlawful among the Hebrews to try a man by night. And they, ha they said unto him, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, ye will not believe. And if I also ask you, ye will not answer, nor let me go. And they asked him further, saying, Dost thou abolish the sacrifice of law and the eating of flesh as Moses commanded? And he answered, Behold, a greater than Moses is here. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, and that tell us whether thou be Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, and I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming into the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He hath spoken blasphemy. What further need we of witness? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is worthy of death. When did they spit in the face and buffered him, and another smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Now when morning was all come, the chief priests and the elders of the people, even the whole council, held a constellation and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they gave forth their sentence against Jesus, and he was worthy of death and that he should be bound and carried away and delivered unto Pilate. This brings us to lection 80, which is the last lection of our reading today. And this is the penance of Judas. 
verse one says, now Judas who had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest elder saying, I have sinned in what I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went out and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the pieces of silver and said, it is not lawful for to put them in a treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field, that it is the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Zechariah, the prophet, saying, They weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they, the children of Israel, did value, and gave them for the potter's field, and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Now Jesus had said to his disciples, Woe unto the man who receiveth the mysteries, and falleth into sin thereafter. For such there is no place of repentance in this cycle, seeing they have crucified afresh the divine offspring of God and man and put the Christ within them to open shame. Such are worse than the beast whom they ignorate affirm to perish, for in your scriptures it is written, that which befalleth the beast befalleth the sons of man. That's interesting. So killing and sacrificing beasts will also fall upon man, also the eating of of beasts of animals will fall upon man and we know a lot about that nowadays apparently that's part of a particular a, a religion that our elite tend to practice so that's interesting that's telling us that in this gospel verse 9 says all live by one breath as the one dieth so dieth the other so that a man hath no preminence over a beast for all go to the same place, all come from the dust and return to the dust together. These things spake Jesus concerning them, which were not regenerated, not having received the spirit of divine love, who once received the light, crucified the son of God afresh, putting him to open shame. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Um, again, please, please, please join us on the Dark Outpost if you want to hear way more commentary and more discussion over this fantastic gospel. Thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you'd like to purchase the opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. I hope you're all having a wonderful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.